Good morning, everyone, and uh, we're back in Exodus, and today we are in Exodus chapter 9. We have seen that God has launched a number of plagues, and uh, the word plagues, uh, though we read it in the English, we tend to think of plagues as something like a, a disease or something like that, uh, but, but that's not what the word plague mean. So whenever we read the word, uh, the 10 plagues of God in Egypt, the word plague literally means to strike at someone. And so God is actually fighting with Pharaoh. A and by that, uh, that is called a plague. And so God said to Moses, go in. Uh, so all these terms uh, is, 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 is useful for us to take note. Uh, go in would be go in to see Pharaoh. And when you go in, Pharaoh would be in his palace, right? So you go in to see Pharaoh. And then you go and tell him this. Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews. Now, these are very important words because um, it is not Moses engaging with Pharaoh. It is God engaging with Pharaoh. And God has made Moses, a representative of God. So he says, that's why he says, thus says the Lord God. But interestingly, he adds the, the God of the Hebrews, not the God of the Egyptians. Because right now, God is fighting with Pharaoh and by proxy, God is fighting all the gods and goddesses of Egypt. And so this is the God of the Hebrews, the only one and living God, the Acher, Asher, Acher, you know, the Yehovah God. And it is also interesting to know that it's, the word is Hebrews and not Israel. That, that is very important because at this point in time, while in Egypt, they are not called Israel. They are still the Hebrews uh, from the descendants of Eber. Right? Eber is a descendant of Shem. And by this, it is crossing over the Euphrates and crossing over the land of Canaan. And by this, I think we should remember this was spoken to, uh, to Abraham. Right? He left Ur to Haran, and then cross the Euphrates and down into the, Can the land of Canaan. And so these are the Hebrews, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And more interestingly, specifically, Jacob. And since they are all Hebrews, God is said to be the God of the Hebrews, not God of the Egyptians, that's the contrast. Two very different groups of people uh, that is being spoken of. And so it says that, let my people go. Uh, this is very precious because God calls them my people. My people. Uh, and remember, we have always been looking at this word, go, it is to send away. That they may serve me. And the word serve is to do work. And you realize that making sacrifice to God is to do work because that is what God wants them to do. Uh, making a tabernacle is to do work. So all of these is considered work. Uh, just like God made the world in six days, he was working. And so on the seventh day, it's called the Shabbat or the Sabbath. God stopped working and made it holy. And that means that that is a day that is different from all other days because God stopped work. And so that's the word work to, uh, and, and, and to Asa. And so, uh, and, and in this case, uh, work is to, to do service, right? To do work, to do service as a servant. And that God wants them to go into the wilderness to be my servant, to listen to me, do what I say. 
that's what God wants His people to do. Uh, if we consider ourselves God's people, that's what God wants us to do. Serve Him. Do what He says. Now in verse 2, God warns uh, Pharaoh. He says, if you refuse, means you reject what God says and, 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 and refuse to let them go or refuse to send them away and still hold them back in Egypt. So behold, and this is a very another important phrase. The warning is the hand of the Lord will come on your cattle in the field, the horses, donkeys, camels, oxen, and sheep. A very severe pestilence. Now, this word pestilence um, essentially is the plague. And, and the plague means a sense of God striking at them to destroy things, right? So that is a sense. A pestilence is not here for celebration. A pestilence is here to destroy. And when you say it's a severe pestilence, it's, it's destruction, right? It's, it's great destruction. Now, there are all these animals that is said that is their are, they are, they are, they are own animals. So we talk about horses. And if you remember, horses are the pride and joy and the strength of the nation in, in uh, Egypt, right? And we are told in, in Deuteronomy 17, uh, don't go and add more horses. This horses come from the Egyptian idea that the more horses you have, the more power you have. And so the Israelites are not supposed to increase their horses so that they depend on God and not on their own strength. Now these donkeys, the donkeys are the, um, the, the, the male asses, the male asses, uh, the he ass. And they use this for, for, for doing labor on camels. Uh, camels are the ones uh, that are beasts of burden to move around. Uh, oxen, uh, they also use oxen. In this case, the cattle. The oxen is for uh, farming. And then the last one uh, is sheep, but actually it doesn't mean sheep. Uh, the last one means small four-footed animals. And of course, the four-footed animals uh, can be sheep or goats. Uh, but one of the things that we would have noticed in, in chapter 8 as well, uh, where the, the, we have taken note that one of the gods of Egypt is actually a goat head or a, or a ram head. And, and it's a god. And so sheep itself would not be the right word to use. Uh, so this would be other small four-footed animals uh, and, and they are migratory animals. I would, I would think that this would not be the regular sheep uh, that the, the Israelites are keeping. Right? And the Lord will make a difference between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. And by Israel, uh, although we read it here, this is for us in contrast. Uh, they, they are the children of Jacob. Still is and will be. When they come out of Egypt, they are called a nation. And so right now, we also need to remember at the end of Genesis, we saw that Jacob and his family stayed in Goshen. And the Egyptians stayed around the Nile River. And so Pharaoh's palace is just next to the Nile River. And we've seen that uh, when the water turned to blood and all this, and he was bathing in the river. And so this is important that God is going to make a difference that the God of the Hebrews will make a difference, a contrast that None will die that belongs to the children of Israel 
and by implication, those that belong to the Egyptians, they will die. And so God set an appointed time, and tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. Now, one of the things that we would take note of is this. God always warns. Why? God doesn't surprise the Egyptians. God always warns. And the reason why God always warns is that God doesn't want to destroy anything. Actually, God prefers them, uh, the Pharaoh, to repent, recant, uh, and just do what God wants. And so God shows them and tells them, this is what I'm going to do. And if you don't listen to me, I will do it. And, and this should give us a, a clue of how God is. He is the living God and he, can, he will say what he will do and he is going to turn around and say, if you repent, I will withhold the judgment. And that's why God warns. And he warns Pharaoh. He will also warn his people later on when they do bad things. God warns us through his word. That God doesn't want to punish us. God doesn't enjoy punishing. God is not a sadistic God. So God wants to teach us, just as we as parents, we warn the children. We don't you know, always take up the cane and whack. And we will always tell them, you know, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to beat you. And then after that, the children don't listen. No, you take up the cane and you show them because you love them. You, want to, you don't want to inflict pain, but you will if you have to. And that's how God is. God doesn't want to destroy things, but God will if he has to. So in verse 6, God did this thing the next day. All the livestock of Egypt died, but the livestock of the children of Israel, not one died. The, 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 the contrast is not one died. Uh, I don't think all the livestock or everything died in, in Egypt. Uh, but we would say that everything, they look around, many of these livestock died. Because later on, there'll be other things that die as well. And God is trying to show them, this not one died means God is the God of the Hebrews. He is protecting them and he is defending them. And to Egypt, God is attacking you. And that would be the message. Then Pharaoh sent and went and take a look and says, not even one of the livestock was dead. And the heart of the Pharaoh became hard and he did not let the people go. So you notice, God did not make Pharaoh's heart become hardened by zapping his heart. God made Pharaoh's heart become hard and stubborn because he now can see that the God of the Hebrews is a true and living God. And he doesn't mince his words. When he say he will do it, he will do it unless you listen to his words. And, and that is what Pharaoh cannot handle. And so the next thing that's happening is from verse 8. So take for yourselves handfuls of ashes from a furnace. Scatter it, throw it up to the skies. Now this is important, I want you all to see. In the sight of Pharaoh. You see, God doesn't want to do anything in secret. Otherwise, you don't know that it's God doing it. So God wants to challenge Pharaoh. Remember, it is God versus the gods of Egypt. And so Moses have to visually let Pharaoh know, this is what the God of the Hebrews will do. When you take the ashes, you throw it up into the sky. It will then come down like fine dust. It will come down and become boils and will break out in sores on man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, this is incredible. Sores or boils. Uh, in our terms, we call them, what in Cantonese, we call them chong. Uh, 
Uh, and, and you know, it would be uh, in, in science, it's a reaction of the body that's trying to eject and, and destroy the, 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 um, the germs that is in the body. But it is painful. It is painful because it's a swell and then it, it can break out. And so God says, this is what's going to happen. The dust here becomes sores on man and bee. So everything on the Egyptians. And so this was exactly what they did. Moses and Aaron, remember, it's always Moses and Aaron. Aaron is a mouthpiece. Took the ashes from the furnace, stood before Pharaoh. Let him see exactly what it's happening. So Moses scattered toward the heaven and immediately caused boils that break out of in sores in man and beast. Now remember, each time a plague happens, Pharaoh will ask the magicians, can you do that? Can you do that? And so down in verse 11, the magicians cannot do that. Why? Because they also cannot boils. For the boils were on the magicians and all the Egyptians. And I would say on the Pharaoh too. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And he did not heed them just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Again, I want to emphasize. When God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, it wasn't that God touched the heart of Pharaoh or zapped the heart of Pharaoh and suddenly made it hard. Hardened means stubborn. Okay, And just like hardening the neck, hardening the heart, makes Pharaoh very stubborn, refuse to listen to God. And that's what God has said, right? I told you, Moses, that Pharaoh will be very stubborn. And why did he become stubborn? It's because he was beginning to lose to the God of the Hebrews. And how would Pharaoh feel when when he is being slapped in the face, that he cannot compete with this God of the Hebrews, of course he becomes more stubborn. He refused to entertain this thought because he is a Pharaoh. He is the God of the land. The seventh plague is in verse 13. Rise up early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh and, and, and and this repeats itself because it is to make sure that Pharaoh sees. It has to be seen. And said, thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews. It is to remind Pharaoh that it is the Lord God of the Hebrews that he is dealing with. It is not any of those gods that he doesn't know. And so Moses actually represents the God of the Hebrews says, send my people away that they may serve me. They may become my servants, right? Become my servants. They will do things for me. Listen to me and do things that I want. And for this time, I will send all my plagues to your very heart on your servants and on your people. Remember, the word plagues is to strike. And to destroy. And God says, I don't want to do this to you. But that if you force me, I will do it. And when I do it, you may know and you have the knowledge now and experience that there is none like me in all the earth. And this is important. You can have your magicians try to do magic tricks and illusions. You can think that your gods of, e uh, of Egypt can do some of these things, but they can't. And now that you can see and uh, that you may know, not just see, the word know is to experience as well. You gain knowledge. Right? And the idea here is that the Pharaoh, his servants or his chiefs, his generals, people, everyone in Egypt will know that this God of the Hebrews 
is the one and only. That is what God is trying to show them. Now, if I had stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, then you would have been cut off from the earth. What is God saying? God is saying, I'm just showing you little bits of what I can do. If you force my hand, I can destroy all of you. I don't have to show you my power. So if you can see the plagues that God plays on Egypt is to show them that the God of the Hebrews is more powerful than all the gods and goddesses of Egypt put together. And that God is warning them that I can take your life if you force me to. So verse 16, but indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may, will be declared in all the earth, that they will talk about God. And I think at the same time, uh, it is also to teach God's people for us to see as well that God is a mighty God. God has the power to do things uh, and this world belongs to him. He could use anything in this world to strike at Egypt. And one by one, he strikes at the gods and goddesses of Egypt. And so God says, if you exalt yourself against my people, if you lift yourself up higher than my people, because I told you to send my people away, and if you are so stubborn, you will not let them go, tomorrow, about this time, I, God of the Hebrew, will cause a very heavy hail to rain down, such as not has been in Egypt since its founding until now. Now understand this, hail. Hail is not stones. Heavy hail means big hail stones. We call it hail stones, but they are literally ice. Right? Literally ice. And that's what God is saying. I will send ice stones down. It will come like rain. Has not been in Egypt since its founding means the size has never been seen. Not that hail has not been seen. They will know what hail is. But no, we, we have seen, I'm not sure whether you've seen hailstones in, in KL. Um, the biggest hailstones I've seen in KL uh, is about the size of a tennis ball. Uh, the ones that, that regularly comes down, maybe the size of a little pebble, Sometimes a big stone, but the biggest one so far has been the size of a, 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 a tennis ball. And when it comes down, it, it will hurt, it will destroy, it will dent your car. Uh, if it hits a windscreen, it will crack it. But here God says, I will cause heavy hail. It, I, I would imagine it will be much bigger than a tennis ball. And when it comes down, what is going to happen? So you take a look at verse 19 onwards. He says, when God sends it down, the livestock and all you have in the field, the hail shall come down and on man and animal in the field. If you don't bring him home in safety, they will die. So God has given a warning. God is saying, if you listen to my words, protect yourself. Bring in your livestock and people in the field so that they can avoid this. Now, in verse 20, those who fear the word of the Lord. The word fear is to be afraid. Always know the word fear is not reverence. The word fear is to be afraid. God has said that he will send down heavy hail. And if you don't bring your livestock and man and animal into the home, then you're ignoring God's warning here. If you ignore God's warning, it means that you don't fear God. If you listen to God's word, then you fear his word. And that is what the Bible always reference. Fear God. Fear his word means 
you do as he says and and things will be okay and so these egyptians if they do as god says bring them into the house be in shelter they will be okay so he who feared the word of the lord among the servants of pharaoh made his servants and livestock flee to the houses come into the home home right here but he who did not regard the word you see did not regard did not treat the word did not hear the word don't care about the word right uh, or don't uh, and the word here regard means if you don't put the word of god in your heart put in heart uh, and it's like the Chinese word uh, if you don't put the word of God in your heart it means you don't care so this is an idiom those who fear the word are those who put it in their heart and they listen and do as they were told because they are afraid of God and so these people who don't put in the heart they left their servants, livestock in the field. And this is what happened. The Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heaven that hail will come in all the land of Egypt on man and beast on everything in the land of Egypt. Now we say the land of Egypt as the, the, the country, but more specifically, the land where it is more fertile, where the Egyptians are. Because in Goshen, I believe, Hail did not come down. And that is still the, the technically the land of Egypt. And so God sent thunder and hail. Why thunder? Because it is raining. It is a sign of rain. And in the torrential rain, instead of water droplets coming down, it comes down with fire as well. So rain on the land of Egypt and there was hail and fire mingled with the hail. So heavy that there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. It means that when they were a nation in Egypt, they had hail. Sometimes big hail, like now we can see sometimes big rocks or, or, or ice that comes down. But this particular instance never in their history. The hail struck all the land of Egypt, and I would say that that's where the Egyptians are, in the field, both man and beast. Every herb of the field, herb of the field would be the things they cultivated. Okay? It broke every tree of the field because, uh, and this the word break in verse 25 literally means um, uh, to, to, to shatter. Okay. Means as the hail comes down, it, it crush the tree. It is not just break, right? It crush the tree, smash into the tree, the big trees can split into two, break down, uh, crack up. Now, that is the, the imagery of the word brook. It's not just literally break the, the, the twig, right? And verse 26, only the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, there was no hail. So that is what I was trying to point out. The hail came upon the land of Egypt where the Egyptians were were gathered. Now, this is a very scary image, right? You can just imagine it's like end of the world. It comes down. Fire also comes down. Uh, so what is happening? And in the old days, in ancient times, where you cannot explain the occurrence, they accord it to the gods. So they have got names of gods all over the place. But now, Moses and Aaron told them, this is coming from the Lord God of the Hebrews. And they can now tell that all these things is not from an unknown God. It is from this very God that spoke through Moses, thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews. 
Now look at what Pharaoh finally did. Finally, the Pharaoh realized this is, this is incredible. Uh, this is not just uh, sores. This is not frogs. This is not just mites. This is destruction and it's greater destruction now. And so Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. Did he know that he sinned against God? Well, the word sin here means miss. I would say that he is saying, I heard what you say that God says this. I have missed the point. I have underestimated God. I have missed his power that he said. And so the Pharaoh admitted God is righteous and my people and I are wicked. These, these are incredible words. Incredible words. Righteous is just. God is Sedek. And my people is Rasha, guilty. My people are the ones who have departed. Means not listen to God's words. And so now he is beginning to see that there is a serious difference between the God of the Hebrews and his gods. They are righteous. And why is God righteous? What, what made him say that? And so I, I would suggest this, that God says what he means and means what he says. And that the words of God is true. He says it and he will do it. And when he do it, you will know it. So it's not done in secret. And so God always tells Moses and Aaron, in the sight of Pharaoh, do this. So that Pharaoh can see that even the blind can see that this is the God of Moses and Aaron who is doing it. And so Pharaoh has no excuse this time. Pharaoh has no excuse this time. And so he says, entreat the Lord. It's interesting. The word entreat means what? Pray. Uh, make supplication or intercede. Intercede to the Lord. You pray to God for me. That is what Pharaoh is saying. Pray to your God, the Lord, Jehovah, that there may be no more of such things the thunders, the hail, the lightning, gao liao, no? it's enough. It's enough. Verse 28, uh, he, he, he is saying, it is enough. Don't do anymore. Don't do anymore. So I said, he said, I will let you go and you shall stay no longer. You can see in verse 28, it is to implore God because now he can see. And, and not only see, he knows. And not only knows by his experiences, he, he has to come to make a decision. And his decision is, your God is real. And, and, and that's it. I have enough. Now, he has said this many times. And each time he said it, he didn't mean it. And so he says it again, right? Uh, just, just go, right? Just go in verse 28. Right? That's just too much. That's just too much of this. Verse 29. Okay, Moses said, as soon as I go out of the city, and that would be the city where the palace is. I will spread out my hands to the Lord. This is symbolic. Verse 29 is symbolic. And the word spread out is to stretch. 
Uh, T T C H, right? Stretch out my hands to display my hands to God. And, 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 and this in in a sense is symbolic of praying to God, right? Because it says pray to God. It's symbolic of praying to God. It's symbolic to reaching out to God uh, and, and, and stretch forth. So you find Moses doing that. It, it's not normal for others, I guess. Moses do that. And the moment he does that, the thunder will cease and there will be no more hail. And that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. Moses is trying to make a point. Moses is trying to say that you now will have knowledge that the land, that the earth, the land, belongs to God. That everything that God is doing is to show you that God is the maker of heaven and earth. That And, and that is what all these things is trying to point out to him. That God can use nature and do things that you, you can't even imagine. But as for you and your servants, I know that you will not yet fear the Lord. The word fear the Lord is to be afraid. And to be afraid, you would put in heart what God says. And Moses says, well, even at this time when you say all these, all these nice words, right? Uh, that I, my people and I are wicked. Moses is saying, I know for a fact that you will not fear the Lord God. Why? Because you have shown time and time again, lip service. If you truly know God, if you truly believe in Him, you would do something. And so the word know also entails doing. Because if you know something, you do it, right? Uh, and, and it's not just knowledge to do examination. And so if you know, it is not to keep in the heart. So then the Hebrew concept is that if you know something, you would do something. If you see something, you would know something and you would do something. And so it's all very visual. And so Moses says, I know. I have seen it before and I will, I will tell you now that this is what you would do. Now I'm going to the last segment. In verse 31, now the flax and barley. Uh, the word flax, uh, like flax seed, it looks like wheat. I won't say it's wheat. Huh? I say look like. It looks like wheat. And then the wheat and barley were struck for the barley was in the head and the flax was in the bud. The wheat and the spelt, right? were not struck for they are late crops. So what is wheat? Flax, uh, let me just point this out. Verse 31. Flax seed, sorry. Flax seed. Uh, let me change this, sorry. Yeah? Flax seed. Flax seed has oil. Uh, they use it for uh, wicks of lamb. And so they are, these are what we call uh, early crops, right? Early crops. Wheat and spelt. Spelt is also like wheat. Sorry, huh? this is the, what I was trying to point at. Spelt. I, 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 I don't know for sure exactly what this is, but uh, for, from what I have checked, it, it looks like wheat, but it's not wheat. And these were not struck because they were not ready for harvest. And the barley and flax are what we call early harvest. An early part of the year, right? Early part of the year. And so Moses went out of the city, spread out his hands, thunder and hail seas. The rain was not poured on the earth. 
Notice the hail came as part of the rain. And instead of droplets, it came as hailstones. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain, the hail, the thunder had ceased, he sinned yet more. Now, what does it mean that he sinned yet more? He missed. He missed even more. What, what do you mean missed? Meaning, if this was what God said, right? This is what God said. To miss means this is what he did. And this is missing. And, and we call it hatat. And how far has he missed? This far. And this is sin. Miss. So Pharaoh missed what God said. And it says here, even more. After the rain stopped, the hail stopped, even more. After the flax and the barley were destroyed. It didn't move him. It, he hardened his heart. He and his servants even more. And so what is important is this. So the heart of the Pharaoh was hard. Neither would he let the children of Israel go or send them away. Send away. And this is what God had said. He won't do that. He will be hardened. And so far, we have seen seven plagues, seven strikes by God upon the land of Egypt against Pharaoh to show Pharaoh that the God of the Hebrews, the Lord God of the Hebrews, is real. There is none like him. And even when they could see it and he may have admitted it, he continued to sin against God by not listening, by doing this. And that is what sin is. What God said, he missed it completely. And with this, uh, we end chapter 9.